Exactly two months ago, I found my best friend, who I had the honor meeting through social media. Our love for spirituality, conscious living, activism, and life is what brought her on my path, and the other way around. Immediately, we started being active together. After two weeks of actually knowing each other, she said, let's participate in this five-day slaughterhouse vigil in Barcelona. And I said yes. Ten days, two women, one backpack, one car to live in, and endless nature. Let's do this. So we just picked up our car with the car rental at the airport in Barcelona, and we're now picking up uh, Julie's laundry that she left in the hostel before we went to get our car. So we're just waiting for that. It's super warm here, it's like 36 degrees, but it's so nice and so warm and after that we're gonna get some uh, vegan donuts and then drive off to a beach to settle our car and to let some Palo Santo to make it feel at home. We decided to name our car Jimmy. So Jimmy, meet viewers, viewers, Jimmy. <laughs> let me explain real quick what this is all about. These vigils I often go to are organized by the SAVE movement this is a global organization which holds peaceful vigils outside slaughterhouses. The key objective of the SAVE movement is to bear witness to farm animals in their final moments before they enter the slaughterhouse to be brutally murdered. Vigils normally last for three to four hours. This time, we will be doing it for five days in a row. Thank you all so much for coming, thank you for being brave enough to come here and uh, do this type of activism as well to raise awareness about what's happening to the animals. We are aware that bearing witness is not the, the most fun thing to do, but um, as you will see it's very powerful and it's very important that we as the people who care about the animals and want to save them do this as much as we can. Not only are these five days emotionally challenging, but we will also not be eating. By taking this hunger strike, we want to outline that starvation and dehydration is undeniably defined as cruelty and violence. What is happening behind slaughterhouse walls is by definition animal abuse. Okay, so we are here and there isn't one truck that actually stopped and all of the activists that are here are just trying to get to the trucks but they won't stop and that sucks. How are you doing? I'm really good. Yeah? yeah? Asking you if you're enjoying this might be a weird question, but are you? Well, I mean, enjoying is like hard in front of a slaughterhouse, but it's amazing how many people we are and from all around the world. It's like really motivating that we're all here. How am I feeling? Um, I don't know actually. It's weird because you can feel the tension in here, but. No, no truck that actually stops, so you just feel and, and smell the fright and the fear. Yeah. So I, just, I don't know. I, feel I hope tense. they're gonna work at some point, they're gonna work with us, not against us. I hope so. I'm, I mean, they maybe should because we will be here for five days. Yeah, I saw like the truck driver like shaking his head, like looking at us while she was um, briefing us. I mean, they cannot just keep driving forever. Yeah. Still, it was I. There was one truck, and I saw uh, the eyes of the cows. Yeah, I saw. Them. It's so scary. They, it's like they, they are so when they turn so big. They turn so big, and they are so afraid of what is coming. They do feel it. Mm -hmm. I pet his ear mm -hmm. or her ear. It's like her ear, and then she just pulled away. Yeah, yeah. Like. There's no trust in humans anymore, which yeah. I completely understand because yeah. the way we treat them is unhealthy. And like envision how, how like their life was before coming here. Yeah. It's like being scared of us. Yeah, I don't even want to know what the humans did to 
steps on mm. why they feel like this right now. No. <sighs> yeah. Hey, little one. Hello. Hey. Hi. Rudely interrupted. <laughs> Um, How dare he? Uh, tomorrow is our first day of fasting, so that means no food for five days, uh, only drinking water, and that's going to be intense. It's not is it, uh, like physically challenging, but also emotionally, and it's going to hit us here and there, and also there and here and here. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it though because. Um, your body is just going back to basic. I think it's I think it's good to feel that way for just a moment. So how many activists are here today? Are you gonna count them? I think around 50 people. I hope there will be more so joining us later. The people that are here are beautiful. It surprised me how many activists from all over the world had come together for this event. And Frank once said, how wonderful is it that nobody needs to wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. Hey babe, are you tired? And so we went on to the next day of the vigil and our hunger strike began. Seeing as Shuli got her yoga teacher certificate in India, we decided to start every day super fresh by doing a yoga session on the beach and ending that session with a long meditation. We did this to control stress and achieve a greater capacity for relaxation, which was obviously very much needed seeing the circumstances. This day, a workshop about animal rights and compassionate activism was given by the amazing Cheyenne Dana, who we've learned a lot from. Okay, so... We are already over our 24 hours of fasting and it really got me. I'm super tired and dizzy and there's so much fuzziness in my head and um, I'm just trying to keep reminding myself that this is nothing I go through compared to what these animals go through every single day. So yeah, I'm just trying to keep up but it's hard. I'm just taking it really, really slow. We're just gonna see how that goes. Everyone around me tells me that fasting for five days with this heat wave we are experiencing right now is extreme. Extreme situations require extreme measures. But what about the 1.8 million animals we murder every single day? And that is only in the country I live in. These beautiful animals have traveled for days in the heat without water and without food. We choose to fast in solidarity with the animals who do not have this choice nor freedom and endure a great amount of suffering. People choose to eat animals not out of necessity, but out of enjoyment, tradition or convenience. But please tell me, when was it our choice to take their life, their freedom? Good morning everybody. Um we are in Tibidabo. It's 6.30 right now. This is a mountain. We drove here last night after the vigil to find a spot where we could sleep. The spot that we found is amazing. It has such a beautiful view and it's incredible. I don't even know if we are allowed to sleep here, but it is just so beautiful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you show what it is. We're now, what time is it? Uh, the 7th of August, Tuesday, 11 o'clock. So that makes us on this fast for 42 hours, you said, right? So I think my body was quite like used to the super regular um, eating. 
and now uh, I really like to just like completely stay away from that I have to focus off food I think my energy today like this morning when I woke up I wanted to go back to sleep straight away drove towards the sea uh, I took a swim and as soon as we were in the sea everything was better just like I felt so much lighter uh, we took a shower and uh, we just did some meditation and yoga session which was really nice so the energy is flowing it's been now 42 hours since we last uh, ate but now after we did a morning swim and some yoga and meditation it's just nice to focus on uh, what's happening here and not what's happening in my belly and in my stomach that's all right i guess so that makes me feel so fine yeah, I don't know. I feel glowy. I feel you look glowy. Thank you. <laughs> Back at the slaughterhouse, together with a bunch of incredible people dedicating their time to make the world a better place. What more beautiful can that be? We activists are left with only the most creative and courageous options to make our voices heard even more and more. We didn't know each other in the beginning, but in time we began to be a family. Happy birthday! Oh <laughs> it's in our camera now. Yes, yes, yes! <laughs> on your birthday, on your birthday. Hello, Hello lovely Stop sunshine of mine. <laughs> Last night I experienced my first uh, mental breakdown from uh, the beginning when we started the fast, which was pretty intense. I cried a lot and I was questioning for who and why I was doing it. Shuli comforted me, which was so nice, and now we went to bed. And then I woke up this morning feeling super good again. So we are now over, what did I say, 63 hours? Yeah. All right, uh, it's day four of the vigil and we stayed last night until 12 o'clock, uh, which was a good decision because uh, there were super, super many trucks coming. Even a worker from the slaughterhouse wanted a few of us to come inside, which is, a, which is good news. They still didn't manage to do that last night, so hopefully it is gonna work uh, tonight. I'm feeling happy, uh, quite emotional, but happy. So I guess that's it for today. I feel happy today. Day. It's your birthday! It's my birthday. Uh, it's gonna be a birthday to never forget, I think. It won't be the most comfortable or the easiest birthday ever, but it will be a birthday to never forget. 12 o'clock, we were looking for a parking space, and I was completely, I don't know how to say, oblivious. Like, I completely forgot the fact that it was my birthday, so did Loretta, and then it was quarter past, and then she did the car like, Happy birthday! <laughs> yeah. Yesterday we finally there were a lot of trucks coming in, which was really hard. And it has been a while that I cried at vigils, uh, but it was my first time that I cried again because it was just very intense. Like you could see the fear in the cows' eyes and they, the way they responded. And we, I saw lambs for the first time, and they really cry out. Like their cries were really heartbreaking. So that was not so much fun. Yeah, we're gonna be doing workshops today. Uh, Loret's gonna get nip piercing, and then I'm gonna get special birthday water, AKA tea. <laughs> on the fourth day of the vigil, Alex Bez gave an amazing workshop on effective communication about veganism. He is one of my favorite activists with an amazing view on outreaching. I had a great talk with him about how to deal with people around you who don't think alike. 
Thank you so much for helping me out by giving me the advice I needed. So the analyzer category, these are people that, they're considered thinkers, okay? They like analyzing things. If you're an analyzer, you might come across as more unsociable because of that. You don't care about talking about small talk. You care more about like facts. And so we had come to day five of the slaughterhouse vigil, day five of our hunger strike, our last night sleeping in Jimmy, our last morning routine on the beach, and that meant the last day of our adventure. We drove to the car rental company to bring back Jimmy and headed straight back to the slaughterhouse by train. But like the end is in sight, which is really nice because I want some watermelon, man. Like I don't feel hunger at this point. I just feel like everything has to go very slow. But I'm ready to break the fast. I'm happy to break the fast, but it's amazing to, especially the first two day where where it was harder of like feeling nausea and uh, hunger, to feel what the animals go through. I suffer with them and now I feel like I'm quite clean, uh, my mental state is clean, yeah. Uh, I view a very beautiful face and beautiful hair there. Are you filming? Yeah. There's like many crispy chicken on the back uh. so that's very ironic. Uh, it's day five of the slaughterhouse vigil. We just passed 90 hours of fasting. I feel incredibly great. I'm happy here, I'm happy here, and my belly is happy. Also, my face is incredibly soft. Just look at that skin. This is stupid. <laughs> and it's like, at five we were gonna break the fast, and I'm so looking forward to yeah. fruit and lasagna, and oh gosh, this really made me realize how much we actually love food, and how much it is a thing during your day. Uh, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that and yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling just super fine. Last night, some of the activists managed to get inside the slaughterhouse. A slaughterhouse employer wanted to cooperate and let them in. They didn't get to the kill floor, but they did get to the place where the animals are kept before slaughter. They weren't allowed to film anything. Still, this is good news. Now that we've seen things like these, we are capable of telling our story to other people. The past seven days have been such a journey. I don't even know where to begin. The things I experienced are just insane and I am now still trying to find a way to process the things I felt, I heard and the things I smelt. For the following days I am going to calm down, relax and get back to myself because the whole impact will be coming. For five days we have been visiting a slaughterhouse, for five days we haven't been eating and that was one hell of a ride. A big thank you to all the activists that showed up and never will give up until every cage is empty. Thank you to the beautiful human beings who organized this event, fasted for five days and keeping up emotionally during all of this. Thank you to all the amazing people that shared their time with us for workshops on fasting, activism and outreaching. Thank you to all the activists from all over the world I had the honor meeting and to call my new family. Thank you for the fact that we can eat food every single moment of every single day. And last but not least, thank you Julie, thank you Universe for bringing this beautiful soul on my path. I couldn't have done it without her. Thank you.